Hello, YouTube. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Okay, sorry. Well, let's restart. Restart. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, uh, this is uh, sort of like the highlights of our discussion that we had earlier about this movie called Hotel Artemis. I'm here with my friend Austin. We review film, well not review, we discuss films, we're not really critics, we just randos, <laughs> casual we randos. Act like it. <laughs> we, we act like it, yeah, but to be honest, no one's paying us, so <laughs> we're not professionals by any means, um, well in the traditional sense at least. Um, but yeah, today's film, we are discussing a film called Hotel Artemis. It is a 2018 American dystopian tech noir thriller film. I'm reading some facts from Wikipedia, uh, so that's why it's like kind of just throwing out some quick facts. But uh, it's written directed by Drew Pierce, uh, and it stars a couple of prominent actors, Jodie Foster, Stillian Brown, Sophia Botella, Jeff Goldblum, Charlie Day, Brian, Tyree, Henry, Jenny Slate, Doug Batista, and Zachary Quinto. Uh, the premise of this film is uh, there is a nurse played by Jodie Foster by the name of Jean Thomas. She runs a secret hospital for criminals in futuristic L.A. Um, and essentially you have all these different characters who are in this hotel. Um, and she's trying to figure out like she, she's 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 kind of just like griefing the loss of her son and trying to figure yeah. out like what happened to her son, essentially. Or she finds out what happens to her son. Um so that's the premise of the film. Um, in terms of like what I like and dislike about the film, so personally, I, I personally didn't really like this film. Uh, I thought that this film was very. It, it, it was. It felt flat. It felt flat on a lot of things. I felt like there was just a lot of characters that were introduced, but they weren't fleshed out enough for me to care about them emotionally. Um, it had a nice hook. In the beginning, like there was a nice intro with uh, the scene where the bank heist and Sterling Brown's character and his team um, trying to escape the, the the bank before the police arrive. Um, there was a nice some action there, so it was a nice hook. But uh, as more characters were introduced in the hotel, as Jodie Foster's character was introduced, um, and we get to understand the main premise of this film, it just it didn't feel like I, I felt like I wasn't. There was enough time. There was not enough time to really build these characters, flesh out these characters meaningfully, for me to care about them. When the when the main conflict arose with Jeff, Jeff Goldblum's character coming in as the Wolf King, and right. uh, Jodie Foster's character, the nurse, figuring out what actually happened to her son, and then they have to escape uh, Wolf King's gang. Um, that fell flat for me. Um, I uh, so I thought. The plot itself was like it, the, for me, this film would have benefited a lot more had it been longer, had it been more time spent towards its characters. I think the the biggest con for me of this film was just the characterization, um, the the acting to me felt a little bit flat um, because I feel like there wasn't enough time to really flesh them out, flesh these characters out to anything meaningful. Um, but there are there are some good parts of it. I think uh, I really like the, the premise is cool. I do like this uh, scene, like the dystopian noir of like uh, setting of like L.A. during these like riots of about wa clean wa like water. There's like these riots about like um, public access to water. That's like going around in the background um, of yeah. this film. And uh, yeah, it just that was a nice premise. But uh, and there were some good spots. Like I, really, I do like I did like Batista's character. Um, he's probably one of my favorites in this film. I also <laughs> really like the surprise of Jeff Goldblum. Um, well, I hope those of you there's spoilers in this film by the way. So if you haven't watched the film, don't watch this. Uh, it's too late anyway. I don't know why I'm putting the disclaimer in now. But yeah, nice to see Jeff Goldblum's character. I feel like Jeff Goldblum just appears randomly out of like nowhere in some of his films. You don't expect um, him. And you like, don't oh, expect him at all. I just like, oh, he's a peer. So I was like, oh, cool. That's yeah. great. Um, but yeah, other than those like pleasant surprises, uh, and then, and then um, you know, there's like, a little bit of like high notes sprinkled throughout the film. For the most part, I just felt flat and I didn't really like um, care too much about the film or, or its characters that at, but not near the end. Um, yeah. No, I feel so. 
I feel um, the same. You know, it was a, it was a movie that kind of, you know, had a very interesting premise. You said it's a very good hook, and I I, bought, I was bought it immediately. But it kind of declined just from the top. It, I think it felt like it started really good, and it just you know it, instead of going up and up and up, it just kind of went down and down, just because. As you said, characterization just wasn't there, right? You, you, you know, mm-hmm. after we saw, you know, Jodie Foster's character introduced the nurse, um, you know, I was kind of not, you know, wondering where we were going, and it didn't, they really, they didn't really, you know, give us, you know, any, any guide points throughout the film of like what kind of um, trail we were supposed to be following. I feel like this movie had a lot that was going on, um, where we were trying to, you know, they're trying to, you know, give us so many characters, so many interesting characters, right? Different, you know, premises. You got an arms dealer, you got an assassin, you got like you know, a professional thief, um, you got the nurse, right, and her orderly. And then, you know, you got so much things going on, but no one was fleshed out. And because of that, I think this movie suffers because we don't get to, you know, be attached to any of their stories. Um, really, this whole movie focused on the nurse. But you know, we don't get to see, uh, we don't really get to be kind of you know sympathetic to her until you know near the end. They they introduce you know a lot of characters um, who who again, um, as you said, you know probably you know felt forced and mm-hmm. um, and did not really add much to to the story at all, right? You know, the policewoman I think was one story. You know, she gets yep. she comes to the movie, introduced, and then kind of you know you know says her bit and then get you know leaves. And nothing is heard from her ever again after that. Yep. Uncle Buckle, yep. right, the arms dealer himself, you know, he's kind of this crazy, you know, kind of narcissistic supremacist kind of guy, um, you know, who kind of harps on the poor. But again, you know, he doesn't really add much character except, you know, maybe providing his, you know, 3D model gun. But, um, you know, doesn't really, you know, put, put much, you know, you know contributes to the story. Um, and then even the Wolf King, right? You know, he gets introduced, but you know, he, he's, he, it's not really like they're fighting against him. Like he gets taken out quietly, um, and you know, there's this whole fight scene, you know, between um, Everest, right, played by Dave Bautista, and then Nice. Um, and the fight scenes, you know, I think you know Nice's fight scene was pretty good. You know, you know, it's very sleek, clean, and you know, shows a lot of action. But compare that with Dave Bautista's fight scene, um, his fight scene felt very lacking, especially for someone who, you know. You know, it's this bulky character. We know he's like a fighter, right, from WWE. Mm-hmm. And, he, you know, we don't get to see much. It's just, you know, a lot of shaky or, you know, shaky camera. It's just him one against, you know, a million when, you know, or one, on, one, one on one when it should be one against a million. So I feel like, you know, especially yeah. when you compare the fight scenes and they, they do it back to back, right, the, these cuts. Um, his fight scenes just, are just, you know, lacking compared to uh, Nisa's fight scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, you know, that, you know, a lot of things, especially, you know, a movie like this where you, you kind of expect, you know, guns are blazing and whatnot, mm-hmm. it's a lot lacking in, you know, this kind of type of uh, action. But again, this is like, again, a dystopian noir film. I like the, the backdrop. It kind of compares to the movie we were watching previously, Parasite, kind of, you know, this social commentary, but it's not really to your face. It's kind of just like a, a a tool that's utilized yeah. to give like you know um you know kind of this backdrop when when maybe it could have been woven a little bit better into the story to make mm-hmm. us care about the world that we're in right like oh wow this world is really screwed up and you know these criminals kind of you know be able to take over right um so you know the backdrop itself the characterization the way you know you know the ensemble movie could have been better um i did like you know you know as we said the character some of the characters in self themselves as individuals i like their motivations their agendas they're there they made sense and i can you know buy into it but then when you put into the story um the story was just not you know being pulled off i didn't really care no, no really sympathy when characters start dying i'm just like i didn't really you know uh you know Feel, feel sad especially like you know i think the big moment was when the brother for rakiki died right yeah um that was supposed to be supposed to be a moving moment and i just you know i didn't really care for the brother at all or or or, or rakiki's you know um sadness again for, for one thing they didn't really you know show it which they could have and for mm-hmm. two Waikiki himself didn't really put <laughs> much <laughs> weight into remorse. it right yeah exactly like he, he he kind of blames niece but then you know he kind of drops it at the home at the home um, you know drops it right yeah. and then there's the whole relationship between niece and like kiki that that's they, they try to play up it's supposed to be there for a dramatic moment um and it just falls flat um it's there but you know they don't really come to it you know she tries to you know you know make amends at the end but you know you really don't feel that that chemistry is there so there's a lot of i think forced dramatic moments like the cop being one the relationship between niece and with kiki right even the the golden wolf uh you know the, with the, the diamonds you know that you know that there's supposed to be this whole thing but that, that's kind of like doesn't really play a part like he gets the yeah. diamonds that so he's worried and he you know brings it up um you know near the end but you know it's kind of like just the MacGuffin that's just there but that doesn't even play a part no one he doesn't even you know 
I don't think like take his diamonds or like kids say he can build a new life. That's not even mentioned again afterwards. Right, after right, the end. right. Um, so a lot of forced dramatic moments. I feel like that didn't really pay off. So, you know, this whole movie, some good parts redeeming, but nothing really. I think that can redeem the movie itself. Um, just because of this, you know, it's it's really really full. It tries to do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I mostly agree with that uh assessment and yeah i for like at least what i would rate it personally i'd give it a two um <laughs> out of ten yeah so i per i personally think a lot of it is like irredeemable to the point where you have to like if, if you want to make it uh watch like make it better at least in my mind it, ha- it would have to be like overturned to some degree which if you want to find out more about how we would make it better you can go watch the entire <laughs> It's it's part of our entire our, our longer discussion. Um, yeah. If you're curious about that, on, yeah. on, on the on the Twitch, um, Twitch channel. And then for myself, I think I, I gave it a, a uh, four point five. Uh, it's you know just below average. You know I wouldn't recommend it in this movie, but you know it has you know sprinklings of good things, but not really too much. I would say. And improvement, we kind of said you know adding a, like a little bit more foreshadowing between you know the nurse and even other people's backstories probably mm-hmm. would have improved this you know movie just a bit more uh, just flesh out the what we got spending more time with yeah just, just flushing them out that's that's the most important yeah, the like, most flushing important, these characters yeah. out knowing who they are why they're doing why these they're, things and, why and how I they intertwine later yeah right yeah, why they, why we care them how they intertwine into each other and the why should we care afterwards right yeah it's yeah. not really there it's not very there uh that's my words uh, my thoughts exactly my thoughts exactly um but yeah, anyway, um, would you recommend this film? Probably not. <laughs> but if you if you want to watch this, uh, like, a noir dystopian-esque film set in L.A., near future L.A., go for it. I, uh, um, maybe you might find something that we didn't, that you like about it. Who knows? Um, like I said, we're not professionals, so only our personal experiences our personal opinions yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's your take of why yeah but <laughs> uh, <laughs> <one> is good <laughs> yeah leave it in the comments below <laughs> um but all right cool that's that's that that in, that concludes this this uh sort of these high this highlight of our of our discussion um yeah i hope after gave it a two i gave it a 4.5 we averaged it out to a 3.25 <laughs> yeah and that's Around what the audience gives it on Rotten Tomatoes, thirty five percent. Wow, it's like we're in tune with the audience. Anyway, um, cool. Uh, well, that concludes that part of uh, this discussion, or like you know the highlights of the discussion. So I hope um, whenever you watch this, if you watch it, you have a great day um, or a great rest of your day. Uh, we stream every uh, Sunday, eleven a.m. Pacific. Uh, discuss a film. Um, and uh, we'll have a. If you want to check out like the other films that we discuss or the films that we the film that we will discuss next, we can include a link to a, a new website my friends created in the description below, uh, so you can check that out. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. See ya.